Why does the federal government of the United States hate its own citizens? You know, the answer to that question, literally, really, figuratively speaking, or not figuratively speaking, is really, in reality, because it can. That's, that, it, it really is the answer, because it can. It doesn't have to like you. It doesn't have to serve you. It doesn't have to act all constitution e e and stuff. It doesn't when it is charged with discharging an actual duty that it actually was granted in the ratification of the Constitution. For the most part, it chooses not to do it. It chooses to do all manner of things that it's granted no authority to do, including sending all of our loot to foreign dictators. $400 billion has gone Volodymyr to Volodymyr Zelensky and the Ukrainians. That's what's on the books. That means it's a lot more than that, and that's not counting the interest on the debt because you have to pay it back. It was all borrowed. The people of North Carolina, the good, great people of North Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia, parts South Carolina, are now being told, and Maggie and I looked this up, this is pretty much what FEMA told the people that survived the volcano fire in Hawaii. Remember? What, this was two years ago, right? Uh, the, the, the island of, it wasn't Molokai. It, it, it's, the, 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 it's not Oahu. It's the other. Well, there goes your book. Uh, <laughs> Casey didn't like being on that show. Uh, ain't live radio and TV great? Uh, uh, fire destroys most of this, uh, this one side of the island. There is devastation that cannot be comprehended. Uh, the heat melts things at the, uh, the upper region of the island. There are mudslides. Uh, there's all sorts of nefarious, uh, suspicious activity going on. And if you remember, then FEMA comes in there going, well, well FEMA's on the job now. You know, the Hawaiian government and FEMA's on the job. Ooh, ooh I feel better, don't you? So they go there and, there and announce that uh, we're, uh, the FEMA is here to deliver $750 public assistance check. Hey, man, I don't want to rain on your parade, pal, but we just got our asses kicked here. $750. Kamala Harris goes to somewhere in North Carolina yesterday. Uh, do, do we have the byline of where she was? But, Augusta, Augusta, Georgia, sorry. Goes to uh, Augusta, Georgia yesterday, has a big hoop to do press conference. She reads again off of a prepared text and gets up there and drones on about how the federal government is here. We hear you. You're important to us. And and, and, and we, we, we are picking up the tab for the local food and water that's on the federal government. You listen to this and just go like, oh, make it stop. Please shut up. You're making things worse. At no point in time would anyone that watched that feel like, okay, I feel so much better now. I think that they're actually coming to help. Uh, as a matter of fact, if I watched that, I probably would come to the conclusion that, uh, that <laughs> I don't know if you come to the conclusion that I've been abandoned. And that uh, here, here is your stipend. Here, here is your, it's a bone from our table. Come on, throw me a freaking bone here. Um, and the bone that was thrown from the table uh, is just a scrap. And that's basically all you're going to get. There are so many things that are going on here that should not be happening. And this is, and, 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 and folks, this is low hanging, easy to fix fruit. Let me just give you one example. Biden decides that he wants to fly over and Debbie, I need to analyze. I want to survey the damage. Well, there's a problem with that. No other aircraft can be within like 100 miles or whatever when the president, when POTUS is in the air. You've got to clear the airspace. Well, guess what? There are places uh, around Asheville, North Carolina, and other uh, devastated places that you can only get to by helicopter. The mules can't even get up there. So 
when Biden uh, chooses to do his flyover, and 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 and, and, and somebody says, he needs he's a president, he needs to see. He will forget what he saw by the time they serve him his malto meal or cream of wheat for dinner. He won't remember any of it. Remember, he has dementia, advanced. So they shut air traffic down for four hours yesterday. Now, what do you think would have happened if they would have told President Trump, well, Mr. President, we can fly you over in Trump Force 3, the helicopter version, or Marine 2 or whatever it is. We can fly you over so you can get a look at it. But just know that there's a lot of search and rescue operations going on that are using helicopters because that's the uh, the only aerial vehicles they can get up and, and drones. And that if you choose to fly over that, that area, then it's going to be basically a no-fly zone, and all rescue operations are going to have to stop. You know what Trump would have said? I see it, by Get the beast. Get the beast. We'll go in the car. We don't need to actually be in the air. No. Tell them to continue the rescue efforts. I don't want to get to There's no way you can convince me that Donald Trump would have gotten in that helicopter and gotten that tour. Now, he may have done it when the area was clear and you were, and then search and rescue was, was pretty much finished. But he wouldn't have done it while there was still a chance to save lives. I mean, some of this stuff, you just hear this, you go like, they genuinely hate us. They love Volodymyr Zelensky. They love the Israelis. They hate Americans. Now, this is something that no law can... You can't fix that with a law. No act can repair that. It is something that has to... That it, it's like charity begins in the home, right? And what your mother and your grandmother told you. Uh, you have to want to perform charity. You can't make someone do it. So the um, uh, just the, the, the reaction here is is <laughs> it sucks. It's worse than Katrina. So 180 some odd dead. That number is going to go up because they got hundreds of people missing. Nobody knows where they are. I can tell you where they are. They got they got flushed downstream by flash floods. There are probably, God knows, 20, 30, 40, who knows how many miles from where they lived or where they worked or whatever. When that flood water comes in, bro, have you seen any of the pictures? Because people like in pictures of the flood waters coming in. There's no way to get out of the way. You can't swim. It doesn't matter if you're Riley Gaines. <laughs> you are not going to swim with that current. So where are the where are the search and rescue? It just I, 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 Congressman Mike Waltz was talking about how you know what there is a military base nearby uh, Fort Bragg and has dozens of helicopters, dozens field hospitals, water trucks ready for humanitarian relief. But until yesterday, Lloyd Austin couldn't be bothered. With issuing the order, oh, yeah, 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 they can use those trucks and stuff if they need them. This isn't an anomaly here. The point that I wish to make about this, this isn't an anomaly of how our government operates. This is how they operate. This is what they do. This is the best they can do. So, again, I ask the question, why do we feel compelled to continue this? You have Alejandro Mayorkas. You got Alejandro Mayorkas holding a press conference yesterday saying FEMA is broke. Well, I have an idea. If FEMA's broke, why don't you hunt Zelensky down and go get the $6 billion you just gave him? Tell him, tell him hey, we put a stop pay on the check. <laughs> if you try and cash that check, it's going to bounce. More money is flowing out of the United States into the coffers of the Ukrainians and other NATO countries and then into the personal, wherever they have their accounts, accounts of illegal foreign immigrants than is needed to assist with the damage after Hurricane Helene. Now, look, I am a proponent of the states uh, being the primary 
the, the primary actors when it comes to government and government relief service because they know that it's their state. They, they know the lay of the land. Uh, start local. Start local, communities, churches, etc., and then you expand out from there if it's needed. Uh, the federality is pretty much the only thing that uh, that I think that they could e- that they should even provide, because uh, they just should leave the resources in the states to begin with. Is maybe, 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 if there is military hardware that is for the use of the entire union, and if you can employ it in a relief effort, then they ought to do that. Should be no damn flood insurance. We should do none of that other crap here. But even when they plan to do it, they can't execute. They can't execute. The behemoth can't even get out of its way. So, it, 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 seriously, Mayorkas warns FEMA doesn't have enough funding to last through hurricane season. Zelensky does. How'd that happen? I'll bet you there are agencies out there. I bet you there are hospitals out there that can cut the boobs and the balls off of little boys and girls that were funded by Biden. And I bet they won't run out of money by the end of the year, you think? I will bet you there are all manner of AFDC and welfare programs out there across the amber waves of uh, of Biden's recovation. I will bet you that they're funded to the end of hurricane season. Which, by the way, Hurricane season, it's rare that you get hurricanes in October. And the only reason we're getting them so late in the season this year is because they're coming off the coast of South America. They're not coming off the coast of Africa. The ones that traditionally come from Africa are all just stuck out in the Atlantic. You know, they're bombarding Greenland (laughs) and and Iceland and and, and the Arctic by the time they get up there. They're causing the Nor'easter! I wonder what other federal agency has money lying around that could be used to aid and assist with the people whose lives have just just, devastated, destroyed. You know, you see the wreckage. I mean, we had some wreckage here after Hurricane Katrina. It was mostly tree damage here where we are. Same thing with after Hurricane Laura. Uh, you, there's just so many trees that you got to clear out of the way. Somebody was talking about this. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember where, where it was. And they were talking about how um, the, uh, the, the FEMA and the other, and the guard and the other responders didn't even get or attempt to get to the areas until Monday. It wasn't even an attempt. You know how the roads were opened? Billy Bob Brubeck. Same way we got out after Katrina. If you don't have active citizens doing this, it's not going to happen. But the response from the federalities is, screw you. Uh, this is all we have. You're going to, here's your 700. I, you know, I can't even believe that, 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 did someone proofread that message from Harris? To go down there to Augusta, Georgia, and to tell those poor people, here's your $750 check. You know how much people got for just lying around in their basements, masturbating during the, the corona doom? Stimmy checks were $2,000 a pop. No, it was $2,000 per, per, per taxpayer. You know how much we got after Hurricane Katrina? Every adult member of a household... And we didn't even ask for it. Got a $2,000 direct deposit. By the way, those of you that are, uh, are, are you, you conspiracy people out there, and I said this at the, at, the, at the time because I didn't ask for it, I didn't request it, how did, the, how did FEMA find my name and Maggie's name that we lived in the area afflicted by Katrina? How did they, <laughs> how did they find our bank our bank account number, and successfully deposit, not once but twice, $2,000 into the account. So look, if, if you did, if somebody run the inflation number. What's in, in $2,005, we got $2,000. What is that in Biden inflation dollars? 2024, what is two grand in 2024? Uh, 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 $2,000 in 2005, what is that in 2024 dollars? I, and, and that would just be the, the beginning, but at least there would be parity. And the only reason that happened is because George W. Bush 
was being embarrassed and humiliated by the national media. Why, why aren't Biden and Harris being embarrassed and humiliated by the national media? I can still remember Barack Hussein Obama. I can still remember Obama going on the Sunday uh, talk shows and talking about uh, the, the, the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina and how uh, Bush didn't like black people and that and who couldn't even conceive of the idea that uh, you couldn't get into your SUV and go drive down the street and go fill it up with, uh, you know, with, 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 with gas. They were so detached from the people that were being affected by that storm, you know. I've got that soundbite somewhere. Uh, Mayorkas uh, uh, warns FEMA doesn't have enough funding to last through the hurricane season. Uh, uh, there is a, another one. Ron Dreher has a piece out today that is uh, 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 on this subject here. Oikophobia and the hurricane. Why does Washington seem to care more about foreigners than Americans? And I think that's true. And if you go to, uh, uh, to the piece uh, from the New York Times, this is the news now. The announcement, uh, 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 FEMA doesn't have enough money to help Americans. The announcement comes as FEMA is conducting a search and rescue operation in remote sections of Appalachia six days after Helene made landfall in Florida. This is from the New York Times. Uh, causing widespread destruction and the deaths of at least 183 people across six states, etc., etc. Uh... Why did that scroll down? I didn't tell it to. Uh, we are meeting the immediate needs with the money that we have, Mayor has said. We are expecting another hurricane hitting. We do not have the funds. FEMA does not have the funds to make it through the season. And then, okay, somebody asked a question, where did all the money go? Well, you want to know? Here's a deep dive. You ready? They spent $641 million on illegal immigrants. Gee, might come in handy today for the actual citizens of the United States. Here's a headline. Biden administration, FEMA holds employee trainings on white supremacy. As more than 1,000 Hawaiians remain missing. Uh, this is from the, uh, for fiscal year 2024, the U.S. Department of Homeland and Security will provide $640.9 million of available funds to enable non-federal entities to offset allowable costs incurred for services associated with non-citizen migrant arrivals in their communities. In other words, they were appropriating money because they knew the floodgate had been opened. All of this BS about then the money is secure. No, we didn't intentionally let anyone in here. No, the BPC, BPM, and no one is done. No, no, because now the paper trail and now the trail of money now says not only did you do it, you did it intentionally and you prepared for it and you even appropriated money. You appropriated funds for it. Folks, this is treason. This is Article 3, Section 3, treason. This is levying war against the state, and somebody ought to stand up and say it. You know, you know, talking about how crooked and corrupt these people are is one thing, but actually seeing it, and then actually coming to the realization that, well, you know, I can actually kind of flesh that out for you and prove it for you. Uh, here, here's, here's another one. Uh, um, you will recall that FEMA believes ra ra racialism is foundational uh, to emergency management. Here is from a FEMA, uh, uh, a piece of the FEMA website, goal number one, instill equity as a foundation of emergency management. This is a Kamala Harris, basically. There's a soundbite out there of Harris saying that basically the people that ought to get response first are black people or colored people. She actually said that. You ought to have to help the equity-deprived people first, and let all the other rich people, you know, the ones that live in shanties in Asheville. I want to get back to this piece here about the government hating us and about how they're getting away with it. Natalie Winters from Rod Dreher's Post. Your government used FEMA funds to build a migrant welcome center. So we're all talking about the fact that Alejandro Mayorkas, and by the way, how is this guy, how is he still there? 
Biden's Lex Luthor, he's literally Lex Luthor. Why isn't some Ned Beatty-like character chasing Alejandro Mayorkas, Alejandro Mayorkas around a federal pen somewhere? Go on, Mr. Luthor, Mr. Luthor. That's what ought to be happening. This guy ought to be in jail. Your government used FEMA funds to build a migrant welcome center. Now they don't have the funds to buy America. Here's the headline. San Diego County Supervisors, okay, $20 million from FEMA for migrant welcome center. You know, people are going to discover more of this. I don't, again, I, 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 for the life of me, I don't even know how Harris and Biden are out of single digits when people do polls. It, it, it ought to be troubling to us that that wench is still polling in the mid-40s and in some places, supposedly now, in some red states at near parity with Trump. The only way that is possible, to, in my estimation, well, number one, you have a brain-dead, fat, lazy, uneducated, uninterested electorate. That's one thing. Secondly, you have a in-the-tank, state-run, state-owned media that control, completely and totally controls the narrative um, and is reporting that all is well in Neverland, even though the emperor is literally running around without any clothes because he can't afford them. San Diego County Supervisors, okay, $20 million from FEMA for, for a migrant welcome center. More than 136,000 migrants have been released from U.S. CBP custody in the county since September, according to a local official. 136,000 in San Diego alone. Folks, I haven't even gotten into the report that was released out by de de that somebody sued and through a FOIA re request was able to obtain the DHS report from the DHS Inspector General that says that Biden and Harris didn't even, they were told that it was dangerous, that it could be a threat to national security. This is from the report now. To use the CBP-1 app and to not screen individually every person that was using the app to get on a treason air flight and fly from where, wherever in Hades they came from, including Haitia or Haiti. None of them were screened, pre-screened, none of them. I want you to, everyone should know all of this. Not, it wasn't just that they weren't screened. They were allowed to put their own details in. And whatever they put in as the details, like, oh, okay, he's from Haiti. We love Haitians. He must be telling the truth. And then Rod Dreher says, uh, what the hell? Uh, who are these ghouls in Washington? Oikophobia is a word used by Sir Roger Scruton to describe the, hated, uh, the hatred ruling class people have for their own kind. Wonder how much of that is in play in this situation. I'd say a lot, Rod. I don't think it's a matter of this administration not caring about parts of America that might vote Democrat as much as it is of them not seeing ordinary Americans versus their capaciousness in caring about the other. And then he says, in 2022, Kamala Harris, talking about Hurricane Ian, endorsed applying the concept of equity to disaster relief. Uh, meaning that distressed white people need to take a, a back seat to people of color when it comes to receiving help. <laughs> Roll it. Here is what Harris said in 2022 while she was vice president. Totally submerged in water. I know we are all thinking about the families in Florida and what we need to do to help them in terms of an immediate response and aid, but also what we need to do to help restore communities and build communities back up in a way that they can be resilient, not to mention adapt to these extreme weather conditions, which are part of the future. Back when I was District Attorney of San Francisco. Oh, here we elected go. In 2003, I started one of the first environmental justice units of any DA's office in the country focused wow. on this issue. And in particular on the disparities, as you have described rightly, which is that it is our um, lowest income communities and our communities of color that are most impacted by these extreme conditions and, and impacted by, by 
issues that are not of their own making. And, and so women. we absolutely what? what and so we have to address this in a way that is about giving resources based on equity understanding that we we fight for equality but we also need to fight for equity understanding not everyone starts out at the same place and if we want people to be in an equal place sometimes we have to take into account those disparities um, and and do that work why are you clapping what in the hell just answer the question, dumbass! Anyone that has been afflicted by a natural disaster after the natural disaster is probably on the same footing as anyone else regardless of what their income is. <laughs> Ladies and uh, folks, it, it, it is difficult to, to, to even hear that. She said that as vice president. Where... You know, I'd imagine that the Trump campaign is probably don't run that ad now. Let those people recover. Don't 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 rub salt into the wound. Don't don't do it yet. Let the right wing media, let the X dot com media do it. Uh, that is that is completely and totally unacceptable. But that's how the government is operating. This isn't a they might do this or they may think like that. Now, in Appalachia, you can see that they're actually doing it. Play Congressman Mike Waltz. You, folks, you, we, we could do the whole three hours on this, and I wouldn't get to everything. You won't believe. <laughs> if this doesn't make the American Chersons out there drastically react, especially the people that, you know, Tucker Carlson's good. I'm going, to, I'm going to shut up. Go ahead, put a clip. Give me the bus. The North Carolina National Guard has a few assets up there. They're trying their best. But I'm talking to volunteers, including my colleague, uh, Corey Mills, Representative Corey Mills, who are paying out of pocket, moving helicopters, moving supplies. And meanwhile, you've got a huge base at Fort Bragg, now Fort Liberty, with dozens of helicopters. And I'm talking to them. They haven't been authorized by Biden, Harris, or uh, Secretary of Defense Austin. He just did today a week into this. People are dying, John. They're running out of oxygen, medicine, uh, the supplies that they need, water. What? Uh, it, it, this is very serious. Up in these mountains, the only way that you can get to them is by helicopter, and you've got a whole base full right down the street. Why haven't they gotten the go-ahead from the Pentagon to get up there, these are active duty helicopters that could be up there right now saving lives. And we're a week into this, and we have just now are getting a, a, a thousand soldiers uh, out of this White House. Now, if you, if you think, okay, so you think that that's bad. Nothing can prepare you for this. Play d d digital media. Fuck. It's easier to, for all of you guys to hear this. So if you can't see this because you're listening on radio, uh, we post most of this on the YouBoob channel after the fact. Um, uh, and you can also watch it on Crusade TV on the Roku box. Play uh, Queen City News report pilot uh, with, with pilot Jordan Seedham and his son. And I want all of you to pay very, very close attention to this one. This is a guy and his son. They own their own helicopter, and they are literally the Good Samaritan from the Gospels. They're literally the, we don't care who it is that we need to help. We need to get up there, and we're going to help them. But wait till you hear. Now, now, you just heard the congressman going, like, they won't even authorize the use of the helicopters at Fort Bragg. They're calling it Fort Liberty. By the way, Trump's going to restore that to Fort Bragg. He's going to sign an executive order. He's going to change those names back. I know he said it in the speech sometime last summer. I fully expect that that will happen here. Uh, listen to what the pilot and the son, who are doing things that the government is refusing to do, listen to what they are told. Why, you, 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 if, you can't be incredulous enough until you hear this. Low cloud coverage is like lure. The cries for help from people stranded without food, water, or electricity hit social media soon after the flooding last Friday. But my parents are stuck there. Their address is <laughs> Banner Elk. They are in the first pondo. If you receive this, please give me a call back. Thank you.
Sidham's phone started lighting up on Saturday with people begging for help. I, mean, I could hear the desperation in her voice. This is multiple phone calls I've received like this, voicemails, text messages, and you could hear people desperate He's at Lake Lure, Sidham by the way. Sidham's son rescued four people on Saturday and spent the night in a nearby pilot's lounge, then decided to fly again Sunday morning. I spoke with my son, which is my co-pilot. Um, I, I said, hey, do you, you want to go back out and, and try to help today? And his, his response was, there's so many messages, I, I don't think we can't not go help. Sidham and his son were headed up to Black Mountain. Flight tracking shows no flight restrictions in place Saturday or Sunday morning when Sidham flew through the Lake Lure Gap. But that was all about to change. The Sidham spotted an older couple waving for help, then landed in what's left of their driveway. Hey, I want you to uh, let me get in. You step out. Go out, help her in, put her bag in the back, get her strapped in. I'm gonna take her down, come back. I'll take him, I'll come back, and then I'll get you. Okay. I originally left my son co-pilot on the side of the mountain. It was, it, it was kind of unstable, so I didn't want to put more weight in the helicopter to lift back off. So I left my son with the other victim, and and I was just gonna take one person down at the time. And and you could hear me in the video talking through with the victims and with my son, what we're going to do. Three minutes away, Sidham spotted a group of rescuers just down the river. He landed and found someone in charge. Told him my, uh, my background experience, law enforcement, uh, firefighting, uh, pilot. He immediately started uh, helping with coordination. He, he gave me radio frequencies to coordinate with them on, um, set up a landing area for me to come back with the uh, other victim. And in the uh, middle of the whole conversation and, and then blocking the road off, I was greeted by the, uh, at that time I didn't know, but Lake Lure fire chief or assistant chief maybe, and he shut down the whole operation. So at, at that point there was, I felt like the conversation wasn't going any further. Shut down and the again, operation. He asked me to leave and, and, and I said, hey, I have no problem getting out of your area. If that's what you want us to do, we'll, we'll leave, no issue. At that point I asked him, you know, what was the reason I had to leave them there? And, and he said, again, you're interfering with my operation. I, I just need you to get out of the area. I said, sir, I'm, I don't know where you were trained at, but I know how my training is and I'm not gonna leave personnel behind. I'm, I'm going back to get my co-pilot. He said, if you turn around and go back up the mountain, you're gonna be arrested. I said, well, sir, I'm, I'm going back to get my co-pilot. I, I don't know what to tell you. And he said, I'm, I'm letting you know. And at that point, he waved for two law enforcement officers to come over and told me that again, if I go back up the mountain, I would be arrested. He flew the three minute trip back, picked up his son and left the woman's husband behind. I'm sure he was flooded with emotions and, and trying to rescue other people. And I, I just felt that it was best at the time to leave. So I did follow his instructions and I ha had a conversation with the female victim before I left, apologizing and explained and she, she was standing there. She heard the whole conversation and um, they were both very, very surprised, very upset. The husband, as I was leaving off of the side of the mountain, at that point, separated from his wife, he was, he was upset. Now, why isn't this national news? Now, that was a local Fox News station that actually did their good job on the reporting, too, that actually found Mr. Senum and his son. What the... What, what, now... In this instance, this was the fire chief of, of Lake Lore. Then he then he then he summons the police. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not a law enforcement officer, so I just have to rely on what you people in the chat room tell me or send me emails on. Is this how you operate? When when you have people literally dying and you have XLEO experienced people with the hardware needed, the only hardware. That can be used to get to certain to certain areas, and you tell them because they're not under your jurisdiction that if they if, if they attempt to assist to save another life, that you're going to arrest them. This isn't Barney Fife hopping into the helicopter who's never flown one before, but read a book about it. This guy has actually has experience. I'm asking the question: Is that? Is that how you conduct your affairs in an emergency? And if it is, you need to change the way you conduct your affairs. And I don't want to hear any of you don't understand about that. I understand about men, hours, minutes, and seconds. I understand about an old man being left on a mountain to cry himself to death. I know about, I can understand that. And to cry when there was an, uh, uh, it, was the, it was available for him to be evacuated. I understand that. Don't you? 
Then there's another woman. <laughs> you know, there's going to be mistakes. These guys are going to make mistakes. We all acknowledge that. Play the clip of the woman that is uh, that tells the story about how uh, she gets a call from... Um, uh, where is it? I know what's on here. Oh, it's at, uh, number six. Digital media file number six. Okay. So FEMA starts trying to get in touch with people. And then when they get in touch with people, they tell them, stay in place and die. <laughs> and basically, uh, your orders from your government are to stay where you are and die. So, uh, I mean, we'll, we'll come by and pick the bodies up. Don't worry. You think I'm exaggerating? Okay, you listen. You tell me. Well, you're going to have to just excuse my appearance because we have no power. We have no running water. But I'm just so pissed off that I've got to make this clear. We got a notification from TEMA. I'm guessing that's FEMA for Tennessee. I'm not exactly sure. I think it's supposed to be the disaster relief people. But they were like, do not donate your time. We don't want your. We don't want you to donate time unless we ask for you. And we don't want you to donate stuff to other people. You need to just donate money and stuff to us and get your instructions from us and listen to us. What? And then you say, they said yesterday, we don't go into areas that the roads are not easily accessible. Oh, wait, you hear this. What? You what? are the de disaster relief people. Like that is your job to go into the areas That's that what you are do. hit by disaster and provide relief. Not to just go to the easy area and sit and wait for the people that are in the disaster area to be able to come to you. The roads that we do have were cleared by the locals and you have to have trucks and stuff to be able to get through there. Like, it's just beyond me. So, and you have us all messed up. If you think you're going to come here and bark orders at us, and then expect the people just to give you the money and us trust that you're going to try to take care of us when you don't go into staff. areas that are not easily accessible. What? <laughs> like, this is Clark County, girl. This <laughs> is Clark County, so, girl. Donate to our local churches because they will make sure that the people that, that are need it will get it. And you need to just, while we appreciate... What help you're trying to provide, I don't think you understood the assignment because it's not to just go to one location in hopes that the people in the disaster area can make it to you. This is so literally... just sit back and watch and we'll show... Yeah, this is literally how stupid these people are. No, we're going to set up a central point here and you can, go, you can go here and you can get your water and your food and all that. Well, what if you can't get there? What, what if you literally and physically cannot... Get to where they are talking about. Sean Davis on Twitter yesterday. Continuing on here on this uh, coverage of the aftermath of, of Hurricane Helene. And, and, and by the way, to all my beloved brothers and sisters in the afflicted area. We went through Hurricane Katrina. Went through the storm and five days of the aftermath. When I say I can sympathize, I, my, that's not a platitude, and that's not just, <laughs> well, I understand. We went through, uh, Maggie and I went through four weekends in a row, uh, spending all, you get off the air Friday morning, head straight to the uh, the in-law's house in, uh, in Ragley, spend all day Friday, all day Saturday, go to Mass on Sunday, half the uh, afternoon, and then head home, and then go back and do it again. We had uh, no power the entire time. It was 95, 100 degrees uh, every day. Me and her dad cutting down uh, the, re the remains of over 100 trees that fell on the property here uh, after Hurricane Laura. I completely understand. I'm one of the rare people in media that's actually had to go through this and do it. And, you know, when you're when you're tired at night, <laughs> it's 81 degrees, and it's 90% uh, uh, humidity. Yeah, it sucks. You're going to sleep in, the, in those conditions. That's how our ancestors did. I mean, we are spoiled. Uh, I'm just saying, I, 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 I get this and I understand this. So anything that anyone can do to relieve this is always welcome. Sean Davis. 
to the founder of thefederalist.com. Text from a doctor friend whose family lives in a teeny mountain town in north of Asheville that's been destroyed by flooding. Uh, quote, people are getting insulin by donkey. And FEMA's response is $750 and wait for three weeks, close quote. How is this happening in America? Well, quite frankly, government. We have too much, it's too big, it doesn't do anything right, and it needs to stop. We should, we should change that from it needs to stop to it must stop. Start demanding. That woman that was, uh, that was saying, I don't know, this is Tama Tama, uh, Tama or whatever, needs to never forget what they told her. And the people in that area never need to forget. But you know what? You need to tell leaders that they should never forget. And if they won't do something about it, then they're not leaders. And you don't need them. And they need to be either exchanged or that system needs to completely be redone.